So a dear friend texts me today. He said, Rabbi, I am very depressed. I tested positive for COVID-19. And this is the first year that I will be spending all alone on Yom Kippur. What do I do? You know, I was reminded last year, before Yom Kippur, I reached out to people, telling them, asking them, begging them to come to Shul for Yom Kippur. So I call one of my friends and I say, Yankel, are you coming to Shul Yom Kippur? And Yankel says, no. I said, why not? He says, Rabbi, I committed too many sins this year, terrible, terrible sins, and I'm afraid to show my face in front of God on Yom Kippur. I said to him, Yankel, God forgives us for every sin. Don't worry about it. You come to Shul, God will forgive your sins. He says, Rabbi, if you knew what I did, you wouldn't talk that way. I said, try me. So he starts listing two of his sins. And after two of his sins, I say, you know what, Yankel, if I were you, stay away from Shul. I'm kidding. I didn't tell him that. What I did tell him was, Yankel, it doesn't matter what you did. God will forgive you. Please come to Shul. And he ended up coming. But this year we in Soros, we have big problems. So many people are testing positive for COVID-19. So many people have been exposed to the virus. And most importantly, so many people are afraid. This year we are afraid. We are deathly afraid of the virus. And we want to stay away. Stay away from people. Daven indoors. Because we are afraid of the virus. So is this the worst Yom Kippur ever or not? You know, this past Rosh Hashanah 10 days ago, in our shul, which normally has hundreds of people, we had 60 people. And so it was with many, many shuls across the world, very, very little, little attendance. And I'm looking around at the people and I'm thinking, why are they coming to shul? Normally we have a lavish Kiddush, no, not a Kiddush, a lunch. We have a beautiful gourmet lunch with ribs and steaks. This year, not even a Kiddush, not even a Lachaim, no Kiddush club, nothing. Normally, we have a beautiful kids program this year, nothing. Normally, I give a long, long, long sermon, peppered with stories and jokes. Actually, maybe that's a reason to come to Shul, not not to come to Shul. But this year, nothing. No sermon. Normally the cantor is speaking and he's giving, I mean, he's singing, he's singing away. This year we do a hurried service. We don't miss out anything, but we do a much, much faster service. Normally, I greet people with a warm handshake and a smile and a hug. This year, nada, nothing. I like uh, greet them from a distance like, hey, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. No, stay away. The shul, everybody's wearing masks. Social distancing, it's cold atmosphere, so why on earth do, am I thinking to myself, do people come to Shul? And here's the answer, I want to tell a story which will shed light and explain why this Yom Kippur is the best Yom Kippur ever. The greatest, the most wonderful, the most amazing Yom Kippur ever, especially for those staying at home. You know, it was in the, t in the early 1800s when the Tsar was ruling Russia. And he instituted <clears throat> the Cantonists. He instituted the idea that he's taking Jewish children at the age of seven, eight or nine years old away from their parents. And he's going to put them in the Russian army for 25 years with the idea of indoctrinating them with Christianity, of making them forget about Judaism, about Yiddishkeit. And unfortunately, being 25 years away from their families, many, many children forgot about their parents and forgot about Yiddishkeit. So our story is about one Cantonist, that's what they were called, who spent 25 years away from his family. He was brutally tortured, but he resisted all attempts to indoctrinate him and to convert him to Christianity, but he suffered horribly because of it. So many years later in his life, he was in his 50s, 40s, 50s, he was davening in a shul Yom Kippur. And because he was a Cantonist, the community asked him to be the cantor, to lead the services for Ne'ilah. Ne'ilah is the number five service of Yom Kippur, is the greatest service. So they asked him to be the cantor. So he gets up there to the podium, it's Yom Kippur, it's the highlight of the Yom Kippur service. And he says, dear God, you know that I have no idea how to pray, I forgot my Hebrew. 
The Russians tortured me and for 25 years I never learned to think. I don't know how to read Hebrew. So what's my prayer going to be, he says. He says, to pray for children. I'm too old to have children. I'm too old to establish a family. So what should I pray for? To pray for life. What kind of life is it? All lonely, miserable, alone. He says to pray for Parnosa, to pray for livelihood. You know, because I was in the army for 25 years, so the Tsar sends me a stipend every month and I'm able to live, so I don't need, a, I don't need a st- a money. But there's one thing I want to daven for, he says, and that is, Yisgadal v'yisgada shmei rabo. May your name, God, may your name be exalted and holy. You see, a Jew at his court, Mendel, A Jew at his core, at his essence, is so holy, is so valuable, is so beautiful. A Jew, what does he daven for? What does he ask? That God's name shall be exalted. You see, this Yom Kippur, this Rosh Hashanah, there's no external trappings. There are no cantors to zap you and sing long there's no long sermons there's no kiddushim there's nothing which attracts you in shul but god himself and for those davening at home we don't even have a shul you're davening by yourself for the 10 powers of your soul so so there's no external trappings it's the greatest yom kippur ever there's nothing to disturb your relationship with God. I did a couple of weddings over the summer and normally these weddings would have 500, 600 people but they were such beautiful weddings just the bride and groom and maybe 10 or 20 people no external music and trappings nothing such beautiful beautiful weddings which come from the soul which come from the heart this Yom Kippur it's us and God in the most beautiful, beautiful way possible. Yom Kippur is the wedding between us and God. We're getting married this year. There's no externalities. It's the cry of the Pintelayid, the cry from the depths of our souls. From the deepest levels of our souls, we cry out to God and we say, Avinu Malkeinu. Our Father in heaven, turn away, take away the Magaifo, this terrible, terrible plague from amongst us. May this year be Tovshin Pei Aleph, which is Tehei Shnat Arenu Plaot. May God reveal miracles in our lives. May we see the miracles. Tovshin Pei, last year was the year of the COVID 19, the year of the Corona. That is over. This year, should be a year of revealed miracles. And this Yom Kippur, my dear friend, don't be depressed being at home. Don't be sad being at home. Because being at home allows you to connect deeply and intimately with God in a way that's normally not possible. May we all have a Gmar Chatima a good, happy, healthy New Year filled with the greatest blessings that God can possibly shower upon us. Chag Sameach.